Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here. Welcome back. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I wanted to look at some overlooked idolatry that may be helpful for you. Okay, these are um, forms of idolatry in our lives that distract us, that get us off track, and that block us from doing the will of God. Okay, so overlooked idolatry can be unconditional love. Some people believe that unconditional love is to let everyone do whatever they want all the time, never resist, never say no, never correct anyone, never call anyone to accountability, never have consequences for actions that they may take or not take. And so that is really not unconditional love. Unconditional love is agape love. And agape love is beautiful and wonderful. We give hugs and kisses and encouragement all day, but we also are willing to give different types of tough love that are required. No, I can't go with you this time. You have started drinking again and we've agreed that that is not okay. Something like that. You, you would work out the relationship the boundaries of the relationship as the person's behavior progresses and trust is built. But thinking that unconditional love is just a free-for-all of love, sweet, warm, fuzzy love all the time, that's not unconditional love. That's called codependency. So just be aware of that, that a lot of people think of unconditional love is that you always say yes and you do whatever the other person wants and you just become invisible. Another type of overlooked idolatry is people-pleasing, and we've talked about this in so many of the other videos. But people-pleasing is basically when in your heart people are high and lifted up, you're worshiping them in your heart, you are a slave to them in your heart, and you're worshiping them because you want to please them at almost any cost. This is also the fear of man operating in your heart. People are high and lifted up, and they are your God. And the Lord is dethroned somewhere in the background. We can't find him. But that's what people pleasing is. It's slavery. And so we love people. We would love for them to be happy all the time. But if you have a problem allowing people to feel their emotions or be upset or be angry, then that could be a big root of your problem with people pleasing because you're afraid of conflict or afraid to let someone have uh, be disappointed or have an anger outburst because they you didn't do what they wanted you to do. So um, just be aware of people pleasing. The best thing to do with people is love them unconditionally with agape love and listen and follow the Holy Spirit around people using boundaries as necessary. Also, another type of overlooked idolatry could be doing the right thing. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I'm a good person. I always do the right thing. And that can be an idol because in your heart, you're performing self-righteousness. You think you're performing righteousness, God's righteousness, but it's just self-righteousness. And the Lord says that is disgusting to him and worthless. So doing the right thing in the right context is a good thing. But it's easy to take this out of context and make it an idol and operate in self-righteousness and pride and... You're lifting yourself up too high, and you're thinking too highly of yourself. And so doing the right thing can be a problem because relating down here to morality and religion, all of these are kind of similar. Um, when you're always doing the right thing, that is your God. And the Holy Spirit may be telling you, like in Hosea, to go marry a prostitute. I mean, you never know what the Holy Spirit's going to do. He, You can't put him in a box. You can't predict him. And so that's just an extreme example. But you would never be able to follow him if you were really hell-bent on doing the right thing all the time. And this can also be the right thing in your mind, your limited human mind. You want to always listen and follow the Holy Spirit. And mind you... These are related again, 
morality, a lot of very moral, upright people are going to perish. They are. Moral people are going to perish, lots of them, because they're always doing the right thing. They pride themselves on their behavior and their choices. They're not listening to the Lord. They don't know the Lord, and they're not doing His will. They are in a prison of doing the right thing. So watch out for morality. The same thing applies to religion. A lot of good people who are very religious are going to perish, y'all. This is horrible, but you need to know it so that you don't get caught in this net here. All right, it's a net of the enemy and he's taking millions down with him. So watch out for morality, religion, and doing the right thing. These things can distract and block and blur what the Lord's wanting to do in your life and where he's leading you. So instead of these things, we're going to try to come over here little by little, okay? You can renounce all of these. You may have to if they're spirits and if they are uh, generational curses in your family line um, or if it's just an idea that you've been taught that you're following, then let it go over time. The Lord will show you. So what you want to do instead of all that mumbo jumbo is focus on Christ. He's the Lord. People are not the Lord and we are not the Lord. You're not the Lord and I'm not the Lord. So focus on Christ and you want that focus to become more and more over time going up to be fixed. You want your focus to be fixed on Christ. Okay? That word fixed is a permanent position. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your eyes, your physical eyes. It's the eyes of your heart even more than your physical eyes. So the other thing is you want Christ high and lifted up. You want him high above everyone and everything and lifted up, high and lifted up all the time. Because you can see him when he's high and lifted up. When you let people over here with people pleasing get to be your gods, all these faces of all these people crowd out the Lord and you can't find him. So you want the Lord high and lifted up and people your same level. We're all equal, okay? Also, you want to, over time, resist distractions, okay? This is spiritual warfare, what we're dealing with here. So when you resist distractions... First, you will resist a little bit, then you'll cave in. And then you'll resist a little bit longer, and you'll get distracted. Then a little bit longer, and then get distracted. And soon, you'll be so focused that nothing, nothing can take your focus away from the Lord. Some things off the top of my head that could be distractions in this world, this information overload world we're in, is a distraction could be unnecessary information. You know how in the media it's just stuff is being piled on top of you. Every minute there's just more and more stuff they want to put on you and fill your mind with and distract you with and get you hooked to. That's the whole point of the media. Um, and one of the big points is to distract you from the Lord and to get you sucked into the vortex of this world system. Very easy to happen. So any unnecessary information at all, you don't have to even bother with. You only want the information that the Lord has for you at that moment. Anything else is irrelevant and it's a distraction. And it's taking up space where the Holy Spirit could be showing you something or filling you or healing a wound or whatever. Fear is another tactic, of course, of the world system and the enemy. You don't want to be afraid afraid of this bioweapon that was patented 20 years ago. No, you don't have to be afraid of this virus, all right? You know, I said, Lord, I'm either going to get it or I'm not. That's on you. I can't think about it at all. And I ended up having it, so it's over. So it's nothing to worry about. You want to ask the Lord what you can do to help prevent it, to help steer around it, but your focus is up here. You're not focusing on a germ or a virus or a bioweapon. See, 
Your focus is on Christ. He gives you all the information you need. He shows you where to go. He shows you how to frame things. He gives you everything you need. So don't let these things creep in there. You definitely want to watch out for pride. And pride can easily come from these things here and could be from this. Uh, it could be from this too. You, you can get pride from any, really anywhere. It'll slip in. Just watch out for pride. Keep your heart humble. And when you're have when you have Christ high and lifted up, you know it's hard not to be humble because you're right there with the Lord, and that keeps you humble. Any kind of excess you want to eventually eliminate. People get obsessed with food, with sex, with shopping, with exercise. All these good things, people get in excess. So you will only want just enough, whatever it is, for your body. Like say it's food. You want just enough food that your body needs. You don't want any excess. You want nutrient-dense food. When you're struggling with food in this area of excess, you can change what you eat. You can change how much you eat. You can change when you eat. The Lord will guide you in all of that because he knows your body and he knows exactly what it needs. So submit your diet, your exercise, your sex life, your shopping, everything you do, your habits, your um, all of the things that you do on a daily basis or weekly basis, submit them to him and say, where is there excess that I could get rid of where I could be more streamlined in your purposes? Um, and then, of course, you're going to eliminate, and hopefully quickly, anything that is destabilizing. Anything that destabilizes you, bam, you get rid of it. Or if you can shift it or tweak it to where it doesn't destabilize you or keep it at a distance, whatever works for you. But... For the most part, destabilizing things need to be pushed to the periphery or removed altogether. All right, so we're moving from these things over here that can be overlooked idolatry, idols that get in the way, that cloud our judgment, that inflate our pride, that cause us to be afraid, that put us in slavery. And we're going to move over here to clear and simple, clear and simple. Focus on Christ, more and more a fixed focus of the heart primarily, but with the eyes as well. He's going to be always high and lifted up. Always, 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 always. There's never a time that he will not be high and lifted up. You're going to ask the Lord to show you the distractions in your life that are causing problems. And one by one, over time, you're going to resist them and eliminate them if necessary, whatever is necessary in your case. So what you're going to do primarily is listen and follow. I feel like a broken record, but this is so important, y'all. Listen. Listen means obey. To obey means to listen. So when you're listening and following, you're obeying the Lord and you're also abiding in Christ. This is why I'm hammering on this so much. So you listen, and as well as you can at the time, you're going to follow. And if you feel like you can't follow, say, Lord, help me. I'm having trouble. There's a video I did on this channel called Take My Yoke, and that may help you. And there's also one called Abide in Me. They're just two-minute type videos, really short, but that could help you there some. One of the, another overall goal in your life over time from now until you breathe your last breath is the overall big picture goal is to purge out the bad, the wounds, get them healed. All of the stuff that's in you that doesn't need to be there or is causing you problems or draining you or distracting you, you want eventually somehow let the Lord show you how to get it out, externalize it, see a counselor, grieve whatever you can do to get it out and replace it with the good in. You're always out with the bad and with the good, out with the bad and with the good. And so over time, eventually, the good may just be in little pockets here and there, but soon you're going to be mostly filled up with all the good and you're going to be using your boundaries down here to keep the bad out. Okay, and then the last point is to use your boundaries. Not only does it keep the bad out, it keeps you doing the will of God, His will, 
not people's will, not the will of some idea of morality or religion or doing the right thing, what you think is the right thing. You're going to be doing the will of the Lord, listening and following him while he's high and lifted up. Okay, I hope this makes sense and I hope this is helpful. You guys are free to leave comments or ask questions. I know I talk fast sometimes, but it just comes fast and I got to get it out. Okay, so uh, I love you guys. I'm praying for you and I pray that the Lord's will is done in your life. He's with you. He sees you. He cares about your issues and mainly he cares about your precious heart. So remember that. Let the Lord carry your heart in his hands during these days. That is the safest place it can be. And as he does so, you'll be able to learn to guard your heart more and more and not let it fly out of your chest all the time. You keep it in the rib cage that God has designed it to be in. And that is a protection. Okay, so you guys like, subscribe, and share. And have a blessed week. And I'll see you next time.